What's happening? George, guess what, everybody? George has his mic plugged in. Because last, last week, dude, it sounded like you were in a fucking echo chamber. That's not my problem. That's your fault. You should have reminded me. The amazing thing about it is no one said anything about it because usually people were like up on upping your ass. About no, they were too. They were too busy getting on me for disliking a female's mole. <laughs> I like, mean, out of all the shit that I've ever said, I think that fucking woman and her goddamn mole, I've gotten more shit about. Yeah, man. See, you're, I'm telling you, man, people thought you were hating on her ass just because you didn't, you know what I mean? And and that's the amazing thing. If you watch the video, I don't discredit her as a fighter. I just discredit that goddamn mole on her I, face. I just want to anyway. tell anybody, anybody, anybody out there right now, and I'm going to put this out there, okay, for you guys that are watching this video, okay? And I'll say it the next video. If you can get Ronda Rousey to respond... To this video about her mole that George is fucking obsessed about. If you can get her to respond, okay, George will wear, George will put a little fake mole right here for the next fucking month. Every show we do. Yeah, I will. Yeah. And you know what? And not only will you do it, I'll do it alongside you since you're my boy. I will, we will both wear the mole right here. Only if any of you fans out there can convince Ronda Rousey to respond to this video or other video that's out there that's going to be uh, Fuel on TV 8 in Japan. Good luck with that. Yes. Now, uh, obviously, before we get started, I want you guys, if you haven't had a chance to run over to MMA Valor, Dot com. Go over there. They've got two interesting articles this week. One is obviously about Tough 17 Episode 6. It's the recap uh, blog. And then they have one about MMA betting futures that uh, talks about uh, the UFC's women's bantamweight champion, Ronda Rousey, George's favorite person. Now, Awesome. Uh, <laughs> uh, what did you think about Episode 6, Dude of Tough? I, I was doing fine. It was interesting. I didn't think Thor Thor would lose. Thor got caught. Uh huh. But the thing that amazed me most is after Homeboy won, he thinks he's the number one seed in the house. Well, I I think that that guy's whole you know Saman's whole approach has been like you know he's he's very manipulative. I mean, it, you could see that obviously Jones is starting to get aggravated with him. You can see that other guys in the house are starting to get aggravated with him because he's very like some of them are calling him dad. You know, it's like he's another fucking coach. He's very much. And, you know, to some degree, you kind of have to say, okay, he claimed he had a blood clot, you know, beforehand. He's trying to plot out everything, so he positions himself to fucking win this contest, you know? Well, I just, I find it funny. Like I said, it's it's funny how much of the, the fighters, like, personal side we're getting ready to, getting to see. We don't see a whole lot of training. We don't see the weight cutting. <clears throat> right. We don't see, we see more about the house and their personalities and the things they've gone through. Like, they really want us to connect with these people. Right. And you're either going to have a, when they do that, it's like a re, any other reality show you watch. You either have, you either love people or you hate people. Yeah. I mean, and I this dude, I, I don't know. I mean, yeah, that was an impressive win, but I don't see how beating Thor makes you the number one contender in the house. I really don't. I know. And he, I'm looking forward to next week's show because I finally get to see the guy I think is going to win it all, Clint fight. Right. Now, let me ask you something. Um, yeah, that's that's. I'm, I'm excited to see that guy fight as well and stuff like this. What is your perspective and everybody out there, what's your perspective on Uriah Hall? Because they're kind of, you know, you're starting to see different parts of his personality. Dude, he's I, a, I mean, to me, I mean, a, any elite guy usually comes across as a bit of a dick. Michael right. Jordan comes across as a bit of a dick. People think LeBron's a dick. Your mm -hmm. boy Kobe, they think's a dick. Right. A-Rod's a dick. Right. And it's just like, if this dude turns out to be that good, Tiger he just Woods fits into a long line. Of, right. He just fits into a long line of other superstars or really supreme athletes who tend to be dicks. And But the one thing is, is I agree with Uriah Hall. Uriah Hall's like, I don't really care about my teammates. I really don't care about you because in the end it's just me versus all of you uh, it, and that's basically what the house is it's one on 15 at some point and it, and that's the truth it is it really is i mean i you, you know you got to give it to the guy because i mean i've always looked at that house as that like you know it's hard you know to know that the guys that you're that's on your team you're training with and stuff ultimately you're going to have to fuck them up you're going to have to beat those guys, and it could be, you know, especially if your team is dominating and getting all the picks, sooner or later, and, and probably much sooner, you're going to start fighting the guys on your team. So, I mean, he does. And I don't... And that dude does not give a shit. He does not care. No, he was obviously bullied as a kid. But, He's got a fucking chip well, on his shoulder. But see, but hold on, hold on, hold on. That bullied bullshit as a kid, and then he <laughs> acts like a little bitch, and then starts, I'm man, I'm fuck, are you a bitch like your girl is? Oh, so now it's okay, because you're big and strong, and you're a karate or mixed martial artist. Now you're going to bully other people, because that's what the guy said. The guys right. were like, okay, cool, you got bullied. Somebody now makes fun of you. You can't take it, so you bully them back, saying, are you a bitch like your girl is? Right. He's like, I'll fuck everyone 
one in this house. I'm like, dude, he, he just, you're a bully now. He, you know, he's a bully. And, you know, the thing is, is that I think he goes so quickly on the defense and he's so all that shit. Because he's invent- fucking a sensitive little bitch. He is. He's well, I'm sensitive. sorry. I'm sorry I called him a bitch. I'm sure somebody out there will take offense to that. I don't that. think George really has to worry about apologizing unless Uriah Hall is fucking knocking on your front door. Because <laughs> I know you Bro, don't want to get... Just, I, I understand your past build to who you are today, but dude, fucking lighten up a little bit. I'm, I'm like, sure. I'm stop telling you, being George. so sensitive. Yeah, well, I tell you what, George. You, it is funny. I'm, I t- George. It, yeah, I know people get too fucking sensitive, but I tell you what, I don't know if I would fuck with uh, Uriah Hall because, like my boy said, I don't want to get that North uh, University of North Carolina kick upside my head. <laughs> For all you people who don't figure that out. George, you, I, I, you'll I call, get it at some point. Uriah no, Hall no. has a uni- Uriah Hall. We at we, we're saying he goes to the University of uh of North Carolina. Don't don't stop right don't, there. Don't, don't tell him. Don't Just tell let him. Okay. Them know. See if you guys that's can for figure people, out that riddle. That's for all you people across the pond who watch this shit and don't pay attention to any other sports. Right. That's your homework. Assignment. That is a riddle Find for you out guys. The answer to that shit. <laughs> that is a riddle for him. Now speaking of riddle, Matt fucking riddle. Okay. And uh, likes his weed. Likes it, his weed enough to where he would rather smoke weed and get high than continue to fight in the UFC. Matt Riddle, I got, I got, I got, I got, I got to sit here and tell you, you know, you've been suspended a couple times. Um, obviously you're going to lash out at the UFC. You're going to get pissed off and everything. But the bottom line is, is this is a business. And I got to side with Dana White on this. It's like, you know what? If you're, if you're, you know, a, a loose cannon or if you can't pass a drug test, you know, then you're not a good well, commodity. It, in it, math in Matt Riddle's defense, mm-hmm. they make exceptions for TRT, but they're not gonna make therapeutic exemptions for people who smoke weed. He has a therapeutic card for him to smoke weed in his state. So right. and it's not like he was he didn't get test positive for THC, uh-huh. which he tested positive for metabolites, which you could keep in your system for up to three weeks after smoking. That's the problem is, is that in certain places, you're, you know, obviously you can have a card for, you know, legal marijuana or whatever the fuck. But the bottom line is that doesn't go across state borders sometimes. And, you know, you don't know where these events are going to be held or what athletic commission I, is going, what their rules I, are and stuff. I, it's I just, agree, but the ath- athletic commissions need to redo that. I mean, that's absolutely fucking absurd. Within the thing, but the thing is, is that, and that's, that's what I'm saying. It's like athletic commissions have to fucking reevaluate it. Yes, but the they, bottom line yeah, is, stupid. is that Dana White has no control over that shit. Right. No, I totally understand. And yeah. I mean, I didn't read what Matt Riddle said, and I frankly don't give a shit because I mean, if, <laughs> it, if, if we all, no, we all have jobs and we all right. have rules. You just yeah. don't go in and tell your job boss to go fuck himself because it's your day to tell him to go fuck himself. Oh, absolutely. You can't do that if you want to keep your job. Yeah. So you continuing to smoke weed, knowing you're going to get busted and then cry out about it, you just told your boss to go fuck himself. And Especially in the end, the when boss you just had twins. You know what I'm saying? At some time or another, and everybody out there, I don't know, you know, you guys got to understand. It's like, I, we've all had our vices. You know what I'm saying? You know, whether it's fucking going out and getting fucking pussy, smoking weed, drinking, doing whatever the fuck your vice might be. But sometime or another in life, you got to sit back and say, you know what? I got to freeze up on this shit because it's becoming detrimental to my lifestyle. And it's, and when you have kids, I mean, anyway, guys, voice your opinions below on the comment board. Let us know what you think uh, about tough, what, what, you know, so far what we've seen with it. And also let us know what you think about the Matt Riddle situation and uh, him, you know, obviously being axed from the UFC and his situation with uh, Smoking Reefer. All right, we are out of here. Comical brash. And yeah, sometimes politically incorrect. The Uncut Sports Show. Non-traditional sports coverage delivered the way you like it by your uncensored co-hosts, Kevin White and George Bedford.